Okay, so this is lecture one. So what I do is I type them on the board here because I have horrible handwriting. You write them down, we'll do two lectures, and then we'll have a quiz, all right? I do, in the intro course, give you some easy tests that are only one lecture because I don't want your GPA to get killed. So when you're taking your first test in any class, make sure that you overstudy, especially if you don't know the instructor because, you know, you never know what they're going to put on the test, right? Minor is just to, you're going to reiterate whatever I put on the board in the test. So we're going to start out with welding, electricity. And we all know welders run on electricity, right? But there's different kinds of electricity. Well, different measurements, I guess you could say, right? Watts, amps, volts. In the welding world, you basically care about amps and volts. We're going to start out with measurement. Electrons flow from negative to positive. That's important for the polarities that are on your welders, right? Because they're going to be direct current electro-positive or direct current electro-negative. There's also alternating current. That's a weird one. It's a sine wave, right? Need a pen? Yeah. You getting one? Yep. All right. Teamwork. Way to go. All right. Negative positive. Voltage. Is the measurement of electrical pressure. When they start out with electricity, they compare it to water because you can see water, right? You can't see electricity, really. So we're going to compare it to water. So it's, it is the same as PSI measures water through a hose. Does voltage kill you? No. It, it's possible, but no. It's the amps to kill you, right? So if you steal a car and you run from the car, the cops chase you, what do they hit you with? Taser. Taser, right? It says something like 200,000 volts or something like that on it, right? Doesn't kill you. So it just zaps you. It just hurts, right? Um, just like override for what's it have like point zero one amps or something like that? I have no idea what a taser has for amperage. No, probably less than that. I should get a taser, you know. Never mind. <laughs> amperage is the measurement of the number of electrons flowing. How many amps it says it injures the heart, but... Well, well, yeah, you injure the heart, you're pretty screwed. Look up how many amps does it take to kill you. Amperage is the measurement of the number of electrons flowing much like gallons of water flowing through a hose. Voltage, amperage, a 
stick slash TIG machine. The main adjustment is the amperage on a MIG machine. It's going to be wire feed speed and voltage. And we'll go over the types of power sources here in a minute as far as how their uh, power works. Okay, so 0 0.001 is the threshold of sensation according to this chart. And then uh, 0 0.01 you get painful shock, muscular paralysis. 0 0.01. Um, extreme breathing difficulties. And then between point zero or point 0.1 to point 0.2 is death. I told you it's not even... It's not and even then between yet. point 0.2 to 1 is severe burning, breathing stops. Just so you know, today you're going to move all in with 155 amps. On 5:30 second day, other 7:18. Makes it feel that scary, up, doesn't it? Uh, it's fine. It's perfectly safe. Grounded. It's got to be right. I hope so. Usually, when people get shocked in their welding, it's because they're welding on wet stuff, and they themselves are wet too. And even when you get shocked, it's not that bad. So <laughs> it's not. There's a potential though. New wattage is the measurement. Of the amount of power or electrical energy. Of the arc. So that's the amount of power. Y is equals. Did we take electrical courses before. Volts times amps. Amps, amperage, current, all the same thing, right? Turn up the current means turn up your amperage, all right? We don't really care what the wattage is. I mean, you do, if you really wanted to get behind the scenes of what was going on, but for just running the welder, you don't really care about what the wattage is. If you want to turn up the heat, you turn up the amperage. That's how it works. Temperature. Remember we talked about last class, it's electrical short. You have negative and positive come together, creates a short which creates heat that's useful to you, right? So the welding arc exceeds 11,000 degrees F, I can't spell Fahrenheit, so we'll just leave it as an F. It's pretty hot, right? 11,000 degrees, hotter than the surface of the sun. This is why welders usually don't like their lives in the summer, right? It's hot and you gotta wear sleeves, of course, so then you're sweating and sweating and sweating. I had a job where we went in at 3 o'clock in the morning so we could get out before the, you know. The hottest time of the day. Right. And nobody complained. I'd go in before that. There was a reason we weren't alive, I don't remember. What it, was, it, was. it was like 78 this morning at like 4 30. Yeah, morning. this morning sucked. Yeah, that would have been terrible. It's because we have a hurricane coming. Sure. With a hurricane coming, torrential downpours. All right, so we're going to go back to current. Direct. Oops, I have the caps on. Direct current electro negative. Now this is you've heard this a bunch of times already. Also known as DCEN, which is just the an acronym for direct electro negative on the machines. It'll say DCEN on it. 
or it'll say DC with a negative sign, or it'll just have a negative sign depending on which one you get. So, or it'll say for straight polarity. Straight polarity is no longer a term that's accepted by the American Welding Society or the AWS, but it is still on older machines. So, and what that means, we'll kind of we'll go over there in a second why it's called straight polarity. I always remember straight polarity because a negative sign is a straight line, right? So, direct electronegative, straight line, straight polarity. Direct current, electrode. Positive, also known as TCEP or reverse polarity. Direct current electro negative is TIG welding, direct current electro positive is um, stick welding. And this next one's got a long definition. I'm not looking forward to it. Alternating current, right? Why don't you use alternating current? Anybody know? They do it in tag, yeah. What, do you, what material are you welding? Aluminum. You're the winner. So when you weld aluminum, it goes to AC. For a couple of reasons. It provides cathodic clean, it breaks up the oxide layer. Let's see here, I lost it. Oh, yeah, the electrons change direction every 1 1 20th of a second. that the electrode and work alternate from anode to cathode. The result is an even heat at fitty fitty. So what does all that mean? Good thing I just stole that gas can out of my truck. I drew this. That's pretty good up there, huh? See, polarities, SMAW. So because electrons flow from negative to positive, so direct current electro positive reverse polarity, you see right here. And you can see there's a plus sign kind of right here, and that's a stick rod, a negative sign right here. So this arrow indicates that the electricity is going up into the electrode. But for two thirds of your heat to be up here on the electrode, and one third of your heat to be down here on the plate. You don't have to draw this, by the way. So you can't. <laughs> These kids are all dry. It's just a way to explain how this how this works. So it's going up into the electrode, eating away at the electrode, right? Now with tungsten, you're going to be out there, and it's going to be either sixteenth of an inch or three thirty seconds of an inch for your tungsten electrodes for uh, doing TIG welding. So. This represents a piece of tungsten. You sharpen your tungsten to a point. I don't know if you do that or not, but so this is like 16th of an inch. This is negatively, this is positive down here, and the electricity is flowing down into the plate. For your result, you need to be one third up here on the on the tungsten, two thirds down here on the actual whatever you're welding the work. Now, when you go into um, TIG, the welders are going to switch it to direct current electro positive, right? Or the stick weller, I should say. So if you don't switch it down to negative, it now reverses the player to go up into the tungsten and you will melt your tungsten all over the place. It'll just, 
It looks like fireworks. It's just it's so small. Not to mention the stick bulbs are probably on like you know 120 amps at least. So you got to really check it when you're. It's more important to check it when you're TIG welding because you'll just destroy the tungsten, which is not a huge deal, but it still costs money. And then your alternating current right here. And you can see the arrows go down and the arrows go back up because it goes like a sine wave. So it goes down and then it goes back up, then it goes down and then it goes back up. So that result is uh, half your heat up here, half your heat down here. As electrons are emitted off the work, if it's aluminum, it breaks up the oxide layer that's on the outside of the aluminum. That's why they do that. It's called a cathodic cleaning. Does that make sense for the polarities? Stick, TIG, aluminum. There is aluminum stick welding rods. If you weld aluminum stick, you go to AC as well. Aluminum stick rods are like um, shoveling snow by hand down a long driveway when you could have a truck with a plow on it. We're too good for that. We got a truck with a plow. We have other welding uh, ways to all aluminum that are way more efficient than stick welding aluminum. Does it say, is there any like practical application? Maintenance. If you have nothing else but a stick welder and you have to weld aluminum, you weld with a stick. We're too good for welding aluminum with stick and we know it. Is that in dodgeball? We're better than you and we know it. It's like rubbing two sticks together when you can have a lighter. It's like, uh, you know, it's just, it's something that's last resort type things. If you look over there on the light poles, you look over there and you'll see where the maintenance guys tend to hit the light poles of the trucks and, and things with the snow's on them, and they'll shear the poles off. And when we first got here, when they sheared them off, they had already repaired them. There would be this horrible stick ball all around the bottom. And then we'd take a MIG welder and sweep it all together so you'll see big giant welds at the bottom of the light poles That's over there. Yeah, it's because we swept in their stick balls. That's all they had, so that's what they did. Now they bring them over here. So, a kid did hit in the welding program a light pole last year. Knocked over one of the big ones. So, you got all kinds of trouble. So if you want to if you want to beat that kid, you have to take out like two light poles, I guess. They got uh, a concrete base, how do you? You hit the concrete base, I don't know. It's, it's all on video, it's, it's absolutely hilarious. We'll go over that in a little bit. <laughs> He ran away. All right, types of welding power. When you think of a, a welder, you think of uh, it's a power source, believe it or not. When they say power source, they're saying the welder, not NYSEG or Niagara Mohawk or the VPU. When they say power source, they're talking about the actual welder. All right, so types of welding power. The power sources are set up in either a constant voltage, also known as, believe it or not, CV. It'll say CV on there. The arc voltage remains the same. Now, Ohm's law is going to dictate that um, as you're moving your arc length in and out, you're messing up the electric electricity, all right? They want you on a constant voltage machine to maintain the voltage. So the machine tries to maintain the voltage. And if you're having a stick, well, it would be with a big machine. So if your stick out is going up and down, the amperage is going all over the place to make up for that constant voltage, if that makes sense. They don't want the voltage changing, so they're going to hold that. Well, it has to change if you're doing different arc lengths. So the amperage is going all over the place. So constant current, that's your stick welders and your TIG welders. But you can't guess what the anagram is for that. I mean, you said it. Guess what stays the same? The amperage stays the same. When they say stays the same, if you watch a welder when somebody's welding, 
it'll fluctuate a little bit, but it doesn't go all over the place. So now, again, as your arc length changes, the current is going to try and stay the same on a constant current machine, and now your voltage is going to go all over the place, right? The way I remember this is in a MIG application, you're changing the voltage on the machine, and it's a constant voltage machine. And stick and TIG, you're changing the amperage, so it's a constant current machine. All right. There's also one called rising arc voltage that I've never seen before, but it's in your book, so we have to go over it. And just because I've never seen it before doesn't mean it's not an important thing to know, but. I've been around a little bit and I've never seen this. I did have a kid that researched this and where it was used and he brought it in. And we looked at it and I forgot it the next day. But it's one of those things that exists. The arc voltage as the arc voltage increases as the amperage. Increases. I don't know how that works, but it's a thing. Welding companies that make power sources tend to mess with electricity to get optimal results. All right, so like um, Lincoln Electric, for instance, has a thing called waveform technology. I always think of it like a sine wave, but it's really not a sine wave. It's Give you above, there's a neutral line and a sine wave, right? Positive or negative is below or, or above that, that neutral line. So they can have a waveform above it or below it and still have electricity flowing from negative to positive or positive to negative. But they've got all these funky waveforms that they've developed for different materials. So if you're welding, like, I don't know, nickel chromium or something, or um, it's a weird one that's local, um, silicon bronze, there's door companies locally. And MIG weld silicon bronze. They have a waveform for that silicon bronze to make sure that the actual wire goes into the metal. All right. If you have spatters, those are little balls of the metal. Now, silicon bronze, you think that's cheap? No. Nah. So they want that going into the puddle, right? They don't want it flying all over the floor. They want it going into the puddle because it costs money. So they tend to mess with electricity, um, welding companies do. Open circuit voltage. Is the voltage of the electrode before the arc is struck? Maximum safe open circuit voltage eighty. Have we ever checked that? No. Should we? Be interested to see what it is. Yeah, I want them. Clamp meters, you know what I mean, to see what it is. So you remember, there's a voltage circulating through that. It's just not closed. You haven't touched. You haven't made the arc go right. So it's just hanging out there, right? The the um, dangerous one is plasma, right? You it's got a pilot arc on there, so you're hitting that, and it's just looking for something to short out on, right? So you don't want to short out on something that's not supposed to, because it's going to blow right through it, and then you're going to have problems, including like you know your fingers. So because you're grounded, because you're standing on the ground, right? Electricity takes the path of least, least resistance, right? So. Open circuit, or the other one is operating. Voltage. Or closed circuit. Old 
voltage and is the voltage during welding, right? There is no, nothing listed as max safe for that, but yeah, one more thing to go over. We're almost done here. Because you're going to get it today and you're going to be using foul language and saying bad things about me if I don't go over it. So it's a thing called, it's a phenomenon. I can't say phenomenon. So just when I say phenomenon, I just go phenomenon. Just so you know. Can't say it. Phenomenon. I truly can't say aluminum. I had a, I had a screamer boss once I couldn't say aluminum. What? I don't understand what you're saying. You know, curse word, curse word. Again, you know, it was hilarious. You get him going really. He's a screamer boss, right? The screamer bosses aren't really allowed or around as much as they used to be. That would be the person that would be your foreman that would scream at you all the time. I've had a couple in my day. I had one in uh, the worst job I ever had was just straight production welding stainless grates for a uh, for a floor. Parts come down, you go zzz, 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 move it. Parts come down, zzz, 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 move it. Parts come down, zzz, zzz. that's what I knew. I don't think a two year degree is going to work for me. I'm going to find out what a four year one's about. <laughs> right? So, anyways, um, I was welding something, this guy, he was bad. He was the worst screen boss I ever had. And I welded it and he came over and he grabbed me to hold it with his bare hand and then chucked it across the, the shop. And I, of course, start laughing at him, and he starts screaming at me about laughing, and I'm like, you just watched me weld it, and you picked it up with your bare hands. And now, you're, and, now, and now you're screaming at me about it. Like, duh. Right? I actually went back to that company when I took this job here, and I asked what happened to him, and they are like, oh, we ran him out of there. Like, screamer bosses don't exist very much anymore because the youth can't take being screamed at, right? That's you. Does that offend you? Anybody ever been screamed at here? Because I can take it, though. played basketball for, uh, we can't mention any names because, you know, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Football coaches, they're going to scream. I had a defensive coordinator in college. He'd always have a dip of chew in. He'd be screaming at you and you'd be picking the chew right out of your face. <laughs> oh, oh. Draw the line. Chewing is bad for your health. Women do not like men that chew, is it right? For the most part. Yeah. You don't chew, do you? No. Just check. <laughs> women chew. I know some women that chew. But I don't know. It's a rare occurrence you see that. Yeah, it's, and it's very rare. Shocking. It's very very shocking. rare and shocking, but yes. Everybody chewed in college football. I don't know why. We had guys from Florida. They had the platinum gold teeth. They still had a different chew. I, I don't know why. You go into films for like defensive meetings, and you just see two cans flying through the air. I mean, you hit a duck, keep your head on a swivel, and you're going to catch one, you know. Chewing's bad for the health, right? That is smoking. And by the way, I'm a welder smokes for some reason. I have no idea why. You, already, you know, there's already fumes in the edge you can get. And what do they do on the break? I don't smoke. I know a welder just chews and doesn't smoke, but well, that's because he doesn't have to stop working. He can just... Right. Art Glow. Lines of magnetic force are referred. Two as magnetic flux lines. And I'll draw an example of what that is next class because I don't want to do it on the board. Uh, when they get uneven, oops, 
and try to straighten out, causing the arc to drift. This will happen to you out there because you're doing such high amps. It'll be right at the end of the weld on your plates and it'll start going. It'll sound like uh, it's the guy in Star Wars with the thing that goes, Wah. I don't know. Luke? Is that what it is? What is that thing called? The lightsaber? A lightsaber, yeah. It sounds like a lightsaber. And then you'll have spatter going all over the place and you officially have arc glow. It is not a good time, all right? There's a test that you take in New York State called the New York State Department of Transportation DOT test where they do a 530 second diameter 718 vertical up on a one inch thick plate with a quarter inch groove opening. They don't let you quench it. They don't bend it. They don't do a destructive test. They x-ray it. It's The test I want to say is, I don't want to put a test down here, but um, you can't use power tools. So like you can't even heat it. You can't preheat it too, can you? right? Is that part of it? I don't think so. But you, um, the root pass they usually crank it right up because they're trying to make sure they blend it all in. But the root pass is one of the easier parts to do because it, you know because you're down in the joint. You know that's when you're going wide that it, it's harder. But uh, you can't use power tools. You can't quench. So and it's time. So you have four hours to do it. And that's the diameter rod you're going to start using probably uh, next class. And um, that gets arc at the top because it's putting so much heat into it, you know, it just doesn't like it. So if you weld on the roads of New York State, you have to have the DOT test. They made it recently so that if you weld the plows that are on the roads, you have to take the DOT test. So there's been an increase in people taking this test. Um, I guess the reason that the test seems maybe a little on the foolish side is that you can't quench it and you can't um, use power tools. If you are on a bridge and you freeze an electrode, what are you going to grab? A grinder, right? And you're going to grind out where you froze and then restart. So why on the test would you not be able to use a grinder? You'll see people taking that test all broken hacksaw blade and just raking the sides of the toes on the one, just raking it. I mean, just going down, get them trying to get all the slag out. If you can't get slag out, you're gonna go over to the wire wheel, right? So, like, why can't you do that on the test? But arc blow is a major concern for that. The only true way to fix it, so I'm right now to fix it is, is well on AC. So people take this DOT test and they switch the player to AC and crank it up. Because you have that 50-50 heating now, so you gotta turn it up a little bit. The um, arc is a little bit less stable with AC, a little less control. And when you're doing these blocks, feel free to put it on negative and put it on AC and see what it does, because you'll see the differences. Um, but yeah, the DOT test, they tend to put it on AC. It's the only true way. These other fixes are like uh, fairy dust and um, unicorns and leprechauns. Do they really work? Some people say they do, some people say they don't. I've done some stuff where I think it gets better, for sure, but one thing you can do is ground in the direction of travel. So if I'm welding across this computer screen starting here, going this way, you would have your ground down here. Will that work every time? Who knows? Wrap the ground around the table leg. So spiral it around the table leg and then ground it in the direction of travel. These magnetic flux lines circle the, the leads. You can see them on the floor. What you'll do is um, the grinding dust will get attracted to the magnetics and it will leave little lines wherever the lead is on the floor. You'll see it. So that you can kind of see it. It's not, you can't actually see the magnetic magnetism, but you can see where, where it was and that it attracted the grinding dust. 
ground as far away as possible. Turn the amps down. Duh. The amps down. Lower the heat, right? The only real one, though, is AC. The rest are like. It might work, it might not. It might work, it might not. But they're myths. Yeti or the Sasquatch. Believe it or not, people still think there's a Sasquatch. They make these things called game cameras. They put them up in the woods. Anything that walks by, it takes a picture. Don't you think we would have found this guy by now? You know how many game cameras are probably just in this county alone? Right. <laughs> That's the fixes are. Other than AC. Like I said, I'll draw off a a nice little diagram like I did today for your next class that shows it a little more of what's going on. So I I turn my rod like this as I'm if I can get in it. And that tends to help, but it's um it's hard to do. You'll see what I'm saying. By the time you're down there, you only got this much rod, so like it's pretty tough. Alright, that's it for notes for today.